We're pleased to welcome now Dan Stein, president of the Federation for American Immigration Reform, also known as FAIR. Dan, good to see you. Nice to see you, Gerard. So immigration, of course, is uh, one of the top issues to voters as we approach the uh, big election on November 5th. We, we seem to have uh, a, a very uh, stark contrast in positions on how to handle the border, which is surreal to me to even think about that. But when you look at uh, the Democratic ticket versus the Republican ticket, Harris Walls versus a Trump and Vance, they have different ideas about whether or not we should control the border, and if so, how to accomplish that. To some extent, Dan, it feels like that the left in this country, the Democrats, don't even acknowledge that this is even a problem. Apparently, to the Democrats, it is not a problem. Um, You know, there was always a consensus in this country from the 60s, 70s, 80s onward that illegal means illegal. And that if we can all agree on anything, it's that illegal immigration should not be encouraged and should not be promoted. Well, that all changed pretty aggressive, well, aggressively, certainly in the Obama administration. It had been percolating for some time, but the, the change in the Democratic Party really changed when the trade agreements that we signed, our country signed, that sent all the manufacturing jobs out of the country meant the Democrats had to form a new constituency. And part of that they identified was this emerging marginalized minority coalition of immigrants and other groups and decided that in protecting American workers and protecting American wages and American jobs, they want to maximize immigration to simply change the demographic base of the country. And since Obama now doubling down under Biden, and now we have Harris, we had basement Biden in 2020. Now we have Hyden Harris who do not want to talk to the press about their, the legacy of, of disastrous and chaotic massive border invasion seen in the last three and a half years. And, uh, you know, a lot of the legacy media apparently want to shill for the Harris Waltz campaign and not make them answer any questions. And it's pretty frustrating because, you know, I'm not taking sides in this election, but if you're somebody who cares about immigration, it's pretty clear, you know, you've got some pretty stark choices here and it's pretty clear who's, who are the candidates who are going to secure our border. You know, my concern, Dan, is that this is, seems to be an issue that is of significant importance to people uh, based on how it affects them personally and uh, indirectly. And so my concern is when you look at uh, the, the, the landscape of presidential politics where our president is elected based on uh, the electoral votes cast by each state, that perhaps in those states which are so-called battleground swing states, this issue isn't as important as uh, it really should be and may not be the factor it uh, should be in determining the outcome. Well, I mean, what are your thoughts about that? Well, that's a very good question, Gerard, because you remember in 2016, folks can remember back that far, Trump's successful campaign was framed around the linkage between immigration, trade, and American jobs. And if you can remember far, that far back, he had Disney employees and other white collar and upper middle class workers who'd been displaced through foreign labor programs and that kind of stuff. Now, once Trump got elected and he ran for re-election in 2020, he did not want to go back to that messaging and instead he focused on the borders. And the borders are interesting, but as you say, if you're a long way from the border or you're, the nor- you're closer to the northern border, it may not have quite as much impact. But Under the Biden-Harris administration, virtually all new jobs have either gone to immigrants, foreign workers, or government workers. Government, right. And American (laughs) workers are being left to do the gig economy, these lousy part-time jobs, working three jobs, wages are not keeping up with the cost of living or anything. And this ought to be a huge issue. Whether Trump can go back and refocus on this fact, the fact that all these jobs have gone to foreign workers should be a huge issue in every state in the country. Because no Americans, Native Americans, aren't getting these jobs. And the Democrats have become this class-based, ultra, sort of uh, left-wing, post-college graduate, Silicon Valley tech, and then, you know, selected minorities who get their seat at the table for the gravy coming off the train. And, you know, the average American is being completely left behind. 
So, I mean, look at Walls. He's like a, I mean, he, he won driver's licenses for illegal aliens. I mean, basically the law, the federal law says if you're promoting and rewarding and encouraging illegal immigration, you are guilty of harboring under the federal criminal code. Hmm. Yet that's what states like California and Minnesota, Mass, that's what they've been doing. They're encouraging by giving out all our benefits. They even want non-citizens or citizens of other countries to vote in local elections. They don't care about voter fraud. They give driver's licenses and the opportunity to register the people who are not citizens. They don't, the amount of fraud that has gone on under Biden and Harris has been legendary. I mean, legendary. We now have millions and millions of people who are paroled into this country and they want to fast track them to green card and citizenship because that's the objective. And they don't give a damn about whether the rule of law prevails. I mean, respect for law is the cornerstone of American citizenship. And under the Biden-Harris administration, it has virtually collapsed. And yet, somehow, apparently, the, the Harris handlers believe she can get through this entire campaign with a couple of debates and never have to sit down and do serious interviews. You go back and look at articles about Harris from a year and a half, two years ago. Even the legacy media was talking about how unpopular she was, how she's inarticulate, how nobody can understand her, how she's not serious. All of a sudden, she's this, uh, you know, like JFK. <laughs> I mean, being being massaged. Uh, this is the, Marshall McLuhan wrote a book called The Medium is the Massage, right? I mean, we're all being massaged. And to think that we're going to have only 80 days to make this selection without any serious q and I mean, are we really going to have a repeat of what happened in 2020 where the public are going to be completely bamboozled by the fact that you got tampons, you know, in, in the men's room and, the, and your boys are supposed to carry tampons around all day for equality and all this other nonsense. I mean, it's, it's, this is the scariest moment I've seen in American politics in my lifetime. Man. Yeah. Um, I've even seen uh, some of the media now comparing her oratory skills to Barack Obama, though I did not agree on the policy perspective with Barack Obama. The guy was pretty good conducting a rally. Uh, Kamala Harris ain't Barack Obama when it comes to that. He's certainly, she's certainly not JFK in terms of commanding the attention of, of a crowd at one of her speeches. But I've noticed that uh, Rhino and I were talking earlier, uh, uh, Dan, about the fact that her, her talking points, her speech, pretty much repeated uh, in the two weeks that she's been out on the campaign trail. I don't hear a lot of discussion about immigration. Now, it's like a non-issue, the border specifically. Well, it's, it is an incredible issue, and the voters are very concerned about it. But clearly, if CNN, MSNBC, Washington Post, New York Times, Wall Street Journal – you know, AP, all those outlets are going to make a point of not allowing any discussion or any allegation that J.D. Vance or Trump make is immediately dismissed as inaccurate or false or what have you. That voices like mine, I can sit down and give you every jot and tittle of how the Biden administration dismantled the things that were working under Trump in the first 120 days. I can tell you every executive order, every policy change, every decision on non-detention of aliens, every improvident release of millions of people, every illegal parole program from places like Ukraine, Nicaragua, Venezuela. Basically, if this keeps up and they get elected, we're going to be Venezuela, okay? We're going to be, and we're going, to be going down to Mexico looking hmm. for jobs at this rate. I mean, it, it is hard to overstate. This guy, Waltz, went to China 30 times. Now, if you studied your history, you know that the left wing was radically enamored with Soviet communism in the 1930s. They were taking on these tours to Soviet commun style communism and they gave in these Potemkin villages in the Ukraine and farms and things like that. They came back. What a wonderful system. We need to emulate that here. I mean, this mm. is what we're dealing with. This guy is full on communist, this guy, as far as mm. we can is con concerned. And his attitude about borders are they don't matter. If you think the Chinese aren't totally in favor of Harris and, and Wallace at this point, I mean, mm. basically what, what we have here is a teacher's union election, right? Teacher's union election, yeah, Silicon point. Valley ideologues, lunatics on the radical fringe. And they obviously have figured out that they can run candidates successfully who never actually be, have to be held to account. And that's a function of the dominance of how the media now operate in this country. I mean, try to go on YouTube. I challenge your listeners. Go on YouTube, try to search a Tim Walls speech from before the last three weeks. The algorithms won't let you go there. You simply can't find it. his old speeches. Yeah, they're all scrubbed. 
They've scrubbed it. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. Uh, they're trying to hide, uh, the, honestly, the past statements uh, and sentiments from both of these candidates, Dan. It, it is disturbing. We got to go, but I appreciate you coming on. That was a great analysis. Uh, the, the stark contrast is mind-boggling, and I hope Americans uh, are clear-eyed when they consider who they're going to vote for because it's um, – uh, a lot to be concerned about. Appreciate it, Dan. Thanks. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you. We're coming right back, folks, in the Element Well Studio.